The Dutch Wadden Sea. For humans, it's a tranquil area of great natural beauty. But for migrating birds, it is one of the busier junctions of the Northern Hemisphere. A place where millions of shorebirds start, finish or interrupt their global travels to eat, to breed or simply to recuperate. And as such, it is a vital link in a worldwide chain where any change can have worldwide consequences. Red knots, oyster catchers, godwits, curlews and many other migratory birds are very much at home here. As is Tonus Piersma, a biologist who has been studying them here for years. So when it comes to these shorebirds, we know a lot now about their numbers. We know a lot about how they move about. We also know a lot how population respond to food resources. So that tells us what the world is like. If we see lots of young birds coming back from the Arctic, we can tell something about the Arctic here. As we stand here, we can say something what happened 5,000 kilometers further north. If in spring the birds come back from West Africa, in big numbers, in a good condition. We know that something has gone right there. So these birds, by integrating the condition at many different places on the planet, tell us a planetary story all the time. And what we learn, step by step, is interpret and read that story. Recently, Tonus received the prestigious Spinoza Prize, the highest Dutch award for scientific research. As a specialist in the ecology of bird migration, he has broken barriers right here in the Wadden Sea. But not only here. More than 4,000 kilometers to the south-southwest lies Bangda Gair in Mauritania. A similar kind of wetlands to the Vardan. A similar kind of biotope in many ways. And interestingly, with some very similar inhabitants. Here we are on the Bangar Gain, in Mauritania. To the east, 8,000 kilometers of Sahara sand. To the west, 6,000 kilometers of Atlantic Ocean. 4,000 kilometers to the north, we arrive in the Wadden Sea. And the birds in spring congregate exactly at this spot to fly in a northerly direction facing the northern wind to fly 4,000 kilometers to the Wadden Sea where they will refuel. Then they are halfway to breeding grounds which are either in Greenland or in Siberia which is another four to 5,000 kilometers. We have come to uh, the Bank Dergain now for about uh, 35 years in order to understand how shorebirds use their environments with respect to food and to their own risk of being taken as food. It's about survival. And over the years we've learned a lot of how knots and battle got with sandaling and spoonbills use this wooden sea type landscape. And we do that by looking in detail what individuals are doing on the different mudflats, what kind of food there is, how food changes over time, and also how the survival of these birds depends on the food resources. Thanks to researchers like Tonus, we are learning more and more about what these fascinating creatures do and how they do it. But we still do not fully understand why. What triggers them? How do they take decisions, individually or collectively? Tonis wants to know. We are right now at the threshold of big discoveries and the reason we are at the threshold is that we have tiny equipment to follow individuals throughout their lives. So we are documenting how individuals make a living by moving from this place to West Africa or all the way back and back to the breeding ground. So we build up individual histories and we can start early in life. We can start with a chick that has just arrived from Greenland 
it doesn't know the one sea at all. And that is very exciting because it's exactly at that point that you get very close to what it's like to, to be a bird. To understand birds, we need to think like birds. And there is still much to discover. Just take a look at this graph of the red knot population that migrates through the Wadden Sea and winters on the West African Bagdagan. What happened and why? So many questions. Questions that need answers. And if Tonus has his way, the recently founded Wadden Systems Research Center, partially funded with Tonus's Spinoza prize money, will play a major role in answering them. Because these shorebirds connect northern and southern environments, we can use them as indicators of the state of the world, of the quality of our world. When things happen to shorebirds, and when we can interpret these changes in terms of their environments, we are able to say how the world changes, and also what this will mean for humankind. To think like a bird, it is a challenge that these scientists are happy to accept. Because if we are to protect these wonderful but vulnerable wetlands, we first need to understand them. And this is what is unique about, I think, uh, NEOS and the Wadden Systems Research Center, is that we keep this practical knowledge going. So that as soon as we have new opportunities for observations, we can use them and bring them into practice. That's very exciting to be part of that.